Samsung's One UI 7 is here, and it's the biggest visual overhaul for the software in years. It's one of those updates that isn't limited to behind the scenes tweaks, but instead makes some sweeping changes to the way you'll use your Galaxy phone and the way it looks. So it's time to take a peek at what's new, and also how this latest update points to a Galaxy S25 possibly being more iPhone-like than ever. Let's jump in. First off, when you get One UI 7, or in my case, the One UI 7 Beta on your phone, you'll immediately notice some high-level visual changes. The battery indicator is this little pill icon now with a percentage inside of it. A lot of the UI elements have this more bubble-like aesthetic with wider radiuses to their corners. That applies to the notification shade and quick settings panel, as well as things like the stock Samsung home screen widgets. Transparency and this frosted glass effect is more prevalent throughout One UI now, giving it a more modern appearance and yes, aping a little bit of Apple's established visual style. There's a new color palette for Samsung's own apps that aims to make them easier to spot at a glance. It's a far cry from the Google app icons which very much still look all the same. Overall, this latest version of One UI now just feels fresher and more modern. Whereas version 6 had some newer design elements sitting on top of others dating back to 2018 that just didn't really match all that well, One UI 7 feels like a much more coherent whole. And though I'm not going to dwell on it too much, yes, some welcome changes to the animation system have been made in One UI 7 and make it feel quite a bit snappier on my S24 Ultra here versus the previous generation, particularly when hopping in and out of apps or rapidly multitasking. My only criticism of this part of the One UI beta is the animations do seem a little extended in places, though it's easy to shorten that duration in Android's developer options. I'm also a fan of the new recent apps menu, though this is primarily a cosmetic change. Functionally, it works exactly the same as it did before. The added depth effect though looks slick, and this is definitely a welcome addition. So the biggest new feature in this UI is the now bar, which lives on your lock screen most of the time. One way of thinking about it is that it's kind of Samsung's answer to the iPhone's dynamic island, but there's actually more to it than that. And of course, it lives mostly at the bottom of the lock screen and in the notification shade, as opposed to flanking the camera cutout like it does on the iPhone. The now bar works as a kind of mini Rolodex of live notifications on your phone. So if something's working in the background, the now bar is where it'll show up. For example, if you're making an audio recording, charging your phone, setting a timer, anything like that that is an ongoing task, here's where it'll live now. And if you have multiple live notifications, you'll be able to swipe through them like this. Tap once to open a larger bubble with more information on the task at hand, and again to launch into whichever app is behind it. This of course works on your lock screen, but also when the phone is unlocked by tapping this little pill icon in the status bar here. Now, the usefulness of this feature is going to depend on how many apps adopt it, and so far we're only seeing Samsung's own applications using the now bar in addition to music and modes and routines. Maps directions are supposed to show up here as well, which is kind of interesting, but that doesn't seem to be working in the current One UI beta. However, I can't help but remember how reportedly Android 16 is supposed to bring exactly this kind of live notification support to the broader Android ecosystem as Android's answer to the iPhone phone's dynamic island, so I would expect to see a lot more apps pop up in the now bar once the next major Android update rolls around in spring 2025. Next let's dig into the home screen and the lock screen in a bit more detail. While the now bar is the biggest lock screen change, you've also got a couple of new animated lock screen clock styles to play with, which is a nice touch, plus you can now show the date above the clock if you like. Again, it's all quite iPhone-y, and you still have this selection of mini widgets that you can add under your clock for additional glanceable information, just like more recent versions of iOS. Speaking of which, the notification shade and quick settings area are now split, iPhone style, so a swipe on the left side opens your notifications and the right side for your quick settings panel. Worth noting that you can go back to the old combined notifications and settings view if you want, but the default is this new split view. This quick panel has also gotten a minor facelift with those wider corners and new frosted glass appearance for sliders and the like, and they're also fully customizable, as in iOS 18, these can be reordered however you see fit. 
What's also new is the media output panel, which is where any music, podcast, or any other media that is currently playing in the background will show up. Again, it's a bit more iOS style, replacing the old persistent notification from One UI 6 and other versions of Android. And the home screen has received even more attention in this latest Samsung update. I already talked about how the new icons and animations look, but now Samsung fans can at long last use a vertically scrolling app drawer without needing to switch to a custom launcher. By default, if you're using a custom order for your app drawer in One UI 7, it'll still use that old paginated layout. And this is actually still the default in this software, at least right now. But if you're a sane person and use the alphabetical order, it's now a vertically scrolling list, just as the Android gods intended. Widgets have been redesigned for a more uniform and colourful look too. They're flatter and cleaner looking, and you can now resize them to switch between different configurations, for example here with weather or calendar. And if you're really after that iPhone-like aesthetic, then yes, you can also enable widget labels as well. And the shapes of these new One UI widgets too are just a bit more fun, a bit more rounded and friendly compared to what came before. And widget stacks are a little cleaner looking as well, without the outer border that used to be there in previous versions. There are no new wallpapers just yet in One UI 7 in the traditional sense, but I've quite enjoyed the new photo ambient wallpaper feature. Found alongside the traditional generative AI wallpapers, you can use this live wallpaper to take your own photos and have them subtly tweaked to represent current weather conditions outside. For example, the hues of the sky might be changed if it's sunny or overcast or dark. And you'll get a showery or snowy overlay depending on any current precipitation. It's pretty neat. The Samsung camera app has gotten a significant overhaul in One UI 7, and on a giant phone like the S24 Ultra, these changes are really appreciated, because they make this critical app easier than ever to use without reaching up towards the top of the display. It really makes a big difference on a gigantic dinner plate sized phone like the S24 Ultra. So many of the camera controls you might use the most are now located in this little action bar hidden behind this button in the bottom right corner here. And one of those is the new exposure slider. Having this here should help if you've ever struggled to try and tap your way to set exposure based on a bright or dark area of your shot. It's a simpler way to just raise or lower the exposure of your entire photo. And there's a new UI for Samsung's Pro Photo Mode as well, once again incorporating this new action bar down below to include features like a tone slider, in addition to all the more advanced controls you'd expect to find in this mode. If you do prefer to shoot in expert raw mode, you'll find that's been similarly redesigned to once again make one-handed operation a little easier. And if that is your jam, you might also appreciate the raw photo editor in One UI 7. Found in the gallery app, opening up a photo taken in raw mode will first give you the option to make edits to the raw original before going into the regular photo editor to make further changes. Right now in the One UI 7 beta, it's limited to just highlights and shadows, but there's potentially a lot more functionality Samsung could be adding to this in future. And finally, your friendly neighborhood content creator might appreciate the new option to allow audio playback in the background while shooting video. That's something that can be quite jarring on other phones when shooting a quick video cuts out the music or podcast that you were listening to in the background. Now with One UI 7, the music doesn't have to stop. Although the look of some Galaxy AI features has been tweaked in One UI 7, there's only one really new AI feature that's been added so far, automatic call transcripts when using the optional call recording feature. It supports 20 languages initially and seems to work pretty well. First, the person on the other end of the call will receive a notice saying it's being recorded, and then after the call is done, your phone app spits out an M4A file of your conversation. And transcriptions can be found in the Samsung Recorder app from which you can generate AI summaries as well. I had some fairly mixed results testing this feature earlier, but on camera at least it seems to be behaving itself. So there's not a whole lot to excite in terms of new AI features just yet. There is of course still time before the stable launch of One UI 7, and of course the arrival of the Galaxy S25 series. So those are the big One UI 7 features you need to know about so far. Definitely some interesting new tricks for S24 owners, especially around that redesigned camera app. The visual refresh, I think, is long overdue and a breath of fresh air compared to One UI 6 in particular. Though, as usual, there's no denying the influence iOS has had on some of the look and feel of this latest Samsung firmware. Let me know what you think of One UI 7 down in the comments and stick around and subscribe for more Galaxy S25 coverage coming in the next month or so. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.